Yeah, I wanted to share with you what I've done so far on my uh, PV uh, water heating system. Um, I'm starting with the skull and crossbones here because, well, first off, I'm theoretically running 29 amps. And this is lethal damage, lethal area of power. So, yeah, if you don't know what you're doing, grow your wisdom. So, um, it's possible to do, but you got to be careful. This stuff has lots of power here. So, that's what the skull and crossbones is for. This picture here is actually we've taken a couple of days ago, uh, 143 degree water Fahrenheit it was putting out. Now what this is, this is not my main heater. This is a preheating system I put together. So I have an 80 gallon tank. My photovoltaics heat up this 80 gallon tank or partially of what it, what it does. Um, I dump my well water into here and then it actually heats up the pre-water and then goes to my regular uh, LP gas water heater. Now my well water temperature is 58 degrees uh, in the summertime and so yes it was actually run, making the hot water heater run a lot more than it should I thought and with this system on any sunny day it does an excellent job and I will still hear the water heater but it doesn't run very long and uh, very often then too. So, um, so anyway how I did this and I have to say when I was teaching classes, I'd always make that lecture to something that I would want to get if I was in, if, I, if I was sitting in those seats many, many years ago. And so this is kind of how I designed this. It took me a long time to figure out all this stuff here. There's, there's a lot of help out there. So I figured I'm just hopefully going to contribute to someone else's um, journey then too, since I think this is a wonderful thing to do. Good for the environment, good for your pocketbook. Um, and it was a lot of fun too. So, so anyway, how I did this. This all started um, basically last December. We put up these uh, 26, I think it's called Primar uh, panels here. These are 300 uh, watt uh, photovoltaic panels, our system here, which was 7.8 kilowatt system. And I have to say it's been working fantastic. Uh, those are the ones on the roof, of course. These in the front, these are all uh, solar heaters from my shop here, which I'm in right now. And of course over here, that's my photovoltaic beer cooler. Very important. <laughs> anyway. So the, when they installed this, they just brought a whole pallet out. And for some reason, they had one, one left over. And I asked him, hey, go, could I buy this? Because I use these all the time for things. And he said, well, OK. And so he ended up selling it to me. And um, this, is, um, this is what it is right here. Now, this is supposedly all the same brand, same everything. But this is a little darker. The ones that picked up the new versions, I picked up two more. We're just a little bit different uh, color, um, shade of gray. That's really no big deal. Now this panel over here, this is a this is not part of the water heating system. Uh, this is just a, a power panel I use to help me uh, power the fans and this thing right now and some other things. And this whole structure right here. Now I originally built this um, for a, a flat flat plate um, thermal loop system. And um, I just, I don't know, there's so many things I did not like about it. It had polycarbonate glazing on it, and I knew for, I knew it was going to probably gonna need to be replaced within five years or so. The stuff breaks up uh, pretty quickly, especially in the summertime heats in too. And I really couldn't turn it off. It was always just kind of there. Uh, those flat plate cluster systems are nice, but they're kind of Model A's too, I think. And uh, I, am in I am intending to build a second system here too, but that's going to be more of a, uh, photovoltaic uh, Fresno reflecting trough, which I can actually adjust the axis on. That's going to be the second part of this video. Um, it's what I found that even though this does an excellent job heating, of course, my heating element and my uh, uh, water heater is at the top. And so I'm getting a lot of um, hot water at the top, but I really want the whole 100, uh, whole um, 80 gallons to be, you know, 140 to 150 degree water here too. So that's a system I had already. So that's why I just mounted them on here. And when I went and picked up the extra panels from him, he had this racking left over. This is some type of discontinued racking. And I got it as, as, as high as I could because I wanted an airspace as, as, as big as I could just for the heat. And I still had to address the heat later on. I'll show you a little bit further in the video here too. But I think it's important to try to keep your collectors as cool as possible. So I'm going to go over the electrical part first and then I'll go to the plumbing. But um, this is the box I mounted 
underneath my deck okay and all these panels I'm using here they're mounted in parallel okay I wanted a lot of current here I didn't want just a lot of voltage I want a lot of current and so what I did I'm I um, wired up these 10 gauge wires here and they feed in these lugs here okay and then what's not pictured here there are these holes here that's where my uh, welding cables are coming into and tie onto I'll give a closer picture here they tie onto these lugs right here okay I can bolt them to both these lugs here too um, and even though this black one here back one here is, is red it's actually positive too I just only had three of each color then too so I had to use that so anyway um, and what the how I did this these are 10 amp Schottky diodes okay don't use rectifier diodes they'll heat up way too much too much of a voltage loss here too and why I had to use these in, in my location, uh, I do have some trees in the far in the west there too. So every day, later on in the day, I do get a shading across this area. And I know for a fact if I would have had one of these panels shaded and the other two are pro producing in full sunlight, it's going to probably back feed through that one shaded panel. So what a diode is, of course, it allows uh, current really to go one direction and it blocks it the other way then too. And so I solder these on these lugs and put them on all in this arrangement here. So you can think about these things as feeder lines from all my uh, collectors into this main collecting lug, so to speak, which I then tie my welding cable on then too. So, uh, of course, the other welding cable goes into the side for the negative part here too. So, and I, it, it is welding cable. And I have about 70 feet to run from my collector to my water heater. And this is not the place to scrimp. <laughs> Buy the best cable you possibly can. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of line voltage loss on that distance here, too. It's got to be multi-stranded. And I'm using one OT welding cable. I got a kind of good deal on it, I thought. So uh, I got 75 feet of both of this and soldered on lugs. And it's been working real well. I did... I did make a bunch of these little 3D printed things, kind of to hold it in the wall here, hold it in place then too. I ran it. I guarantee you, running wire is so much easier than running uh, plumbing. <laughs> so uh, another good reason here too. So so anyway, that's that's the cable I use for that too. And now this is where I put it into. Here's my cable coming right into my. Um, control unit and this is actually in one basement room there's a wall back here and that's a stairwell and uh, underneath that's all the hoses going to my existing lp water tank so this is just a preheater i'm doing like i said and the welding cable first off goes right to this cutoff switch very important so if i have ever a problem i can just disconnect the entire thing and um, just by flipping the switch there too and that's good enough to handle all this current and then some um, and I'm using an Arduino system here. I had these boxes already made up with LCDs, and this actually has some uh, uh, FX88 fruit, um, um, basically a sound generator inside, which you can load up uh, wave files and they'll play things. In fact, as a reminder to me, every time it boots up, it plays that one uh, Oh Death from uh, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Just as a reminder, I'm working with lethal voltage here too. So, but it's it's nice about this that if I do have an open switch or it exceeds temp temperature parameters or whatever, it can generate then audio signals for me. Now I do not run this from the solar system. This is actually plugged into a wall wart. I didn't want to. Uh, sometimes you run the risk of when voltage is just coming up, a browning out and locking up a, a small microcomputer sometimes. So this just plugs into the wall, and I figured it run, runs a whole year for two dollars. So that's something I can afford, and I'm producing my own power anyway. Um, so what I have here, this little wire coming out here too. This is a wire going to a sensor. This one right here. It's a sensor I put onto the output pipe. So I can then, this, so this temperature here actually comes from this. Now, this is right after I filled it up. It's still very cold. Uh, my water here is, like I said, it's 58 degrees. Um, and that was 58 degrees would be dumping right into my existing water heater. So this is the preheater here too. So now what I use to control the thermostat here, control the power going down to the element, this is a Krylon uh, 40 amp uh, solid state relay. Okay, now what you need to do is make sure you mount this thing not vertically, okay, but mount this thing sideways. When I first was just doing some tests here, I mounted this thing vertically, and of course the heat in the bottom here generates the heat, and then it 
transfers to the heat sink and of course then it's just right there under it and heating the whole thing up then too so what i did i mounted it ver uh, sideways to airflow and i even mounted this little um, muffin fan on top here this is a 24 um, volt muffin fan it's well it's wired in parallel with the heating element and so that's just to keep things cool and I, I did put some thermal grease in the back of this thing and mounted the whole system on this extra piece of angle iron i had of, of aluminum just as a further heat source and i can tell it gets warm but shooting it with my little infrared camera or infrared um, gauge it probably doesn't get more than 70 75 degrees so i'm kind of happy with that now these doubling wires you see this is a wire coming from the lug here from the uh, disconnect switch here too and uh, this is the double wire going down to my heating element. And the reason I'm doubling the wires up is that on my earlier test, these are 10 gauge multi-stranded wires and the wires themselves are getting too hot. So I actually, uh, there's not enough space on these small screws to put a bigger, a, a bigger lug. So what I did, I just put two lugs on of these smaller sizes, but doubled up the wiring so it can actually handle half the current then too. Did the same thing for the ground, of course, then too. So, and you have to use a solid state relay. I suppose you could use a DC um, relay, but I don't like the things that open up points with DC. They like to arc a lot. And, uh, no, and do not use the relay that actually comes with your uh, hot water heater. These things are designed for AC and AC only. If you use this for DC, it's just going to fuse, fuse the contacts together or melt it or something terrible. So don't go that route. However, I am using it as a switch. These two additional wires go up to my Arduino board and monitor the switch. So if it ever opens up because it exceeds heat, well, it's going to trigger an alarm saying oh, I've reach, you've reached a heat level here too and shut off the alarm then too. So uh, if I continue on here, this is another reason why I had to um, double up the wires. Now, this is the heating element I'm using here too. And the, the little... Um, bolts that come on these things are not big enough for a bigger heating element without touching the other side so again i had to use a little bit smaller one um, but really these wires have not been getting warm now they've been doing real good and i really have no problem here too so now choosing the heating element that's really key to how well the system works i had one earlier on that i didn't before i knew what i was doing so to speak and um that was just one i was trying and playing around with and i did not get the performance out of that one here too so there is a website here this waterheatertimer.org is a really wonderful source here too that t shows you how and what and why and gives you the rationale and everything here too but it really it comes right back down to ohm's law you know where voltage um equals your amps times your resistance. Another way to look at that is from the power, is power, of course, and you want more power. <laughs> power equals voltage times amps. Well, if we rearrange this formula to down here, voltage divided by amps equals resistance. That's the key to the system. That's the key to actually how you choose the right uh, heating element here, too. I got the Durnod, or or not or i'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this thing here too i'm using a 48 volt 1500 watt submersible dc heating element here too um, and what you need to do to figure this out is go to your specs of your solar panel okay all these things you can look up the solar span, solar panel uh, specs here too and on mine well this is what's important your p max volt is 32 volts and your p max uh, amps which is 9.4 amps okay and also check out make sure you can find the temperature coefficient because we will be looking at that later here too now the model efficiency is nice to know but it really doesn't figure into anything although i'm glad to see these panels are um, are pretty respectable too so and so how this all figures in this over here is this is the power curve that a lot you'll see a lot between the volts and the amps and two the currents and the voltage here too and the power comes when you're marrying the best of the best so if you can get the best possible current and the best possible voltage well that's your power okay because power equals voltage times your amps up here too so but how do you how do you get that, that that's the whole thing well if you go back to your resistance here too this shows you right here 
this is according to this chart right here this is like 7.4 ohms on this particular arrangement here too but if we plug in my numbers from my system here too my v map is basically 32 volts okay and i'm getting 9.4 amps per panel however i'm running three panels in parallel so if I run three in parallel, we're actually looking at the 28.2, which is three, 9.4 times three. Uh, so 32 volts divided by 28, that comes out to 1.1347 ohms. Okay, that's the maximum power point. Now I'm not talking about maximum power point tracking yet. That's just what the maximum power point. You want it to be someplace up in here. This is going to work better, a little higher current and higher voltage, but yeah, there's always some parameters going on. This is theoretically what is good, but you're always going to get a little bit of sunny uh, sky, clouds, humidity. It's it's, always, it's going to drift around a little bit here too, but trying to get this the best you possibly can. Um, that's the best way to get it set up then too. Um, there is a little bit more information in your water heater. So go back to, again here. The other pages here too, this water heater, that timer to talk about this. In fact, this is where I got this chart from here too. So let's continue on here. Again, there's another page of this place he's got here too, converting an AC water heater to DC water heating. Good resource. Just go there here too. So how do you pick the correct element? It's by listed by ohms and two. Well, there's a formula out there, and I'm not sure where it came from, but this is the one everyone seems to use, is that if you if you take the element voltage, okay, it's voltage times voltage divided by the watts, okay? So, and that equals your resistance. So we look at the one I chose. Well, 48 times 48 divided by 1500 comes out to 1.536 ohms. That's what I want for my heating element, okay? Um, now, if I look at my, if that, that's what, that's is the heating element, I should say. If I look at what I want for my system, that's the 32 times divided by 28.2, that comes out to 1.347 ohms. My specs, that's, theoretically what I want for my system here too but of course I know panels produce a little more power than that sometimes and not sometimes the best um, current then too so if I even fudge the numbers a little bit you know say 36 volts and 25 amps well, I'm looking at 1.44 ohms and this one here this Denrod or Dernod or whatever system I got here that's the closest match I can find um, and again if you're going to go back here it may be here it may be here there's not that much difference. You're going to slide it back and forth depending on the atmospheric conditions that day. So as long as you're in the ballpark around here, you don't want to be down here or up over here. <laughs> but yeah, keep it up there someplace and you'll be happy with the system here too. So, so that's the one I chose and why I chose it on my system. Remember, I'm running parallel on my um, panels though too. So and this is what the tracking is. Okay, on a tracking system, if you have a just a number, okay, here's your current and here's your voltage. Well, you know the best power here is going to come with that wonderful marriage between the best current and the best voltage. Well, on this system here, it's going to be around 28 ohms. Okay, however, it gets cloudy, whatever happens to the atmosphere, you know, too much rain, whatever, and all of a sudden your current drops down. Well, this is going to be the maximum power for that time for that particular time and space whatever and you can see here if you figure that one up it's going to come out 169 ohms okay now this chart came from this performance analysis of photovoltaic water heating systems and i really like data everything should be data driven don't just you know if you're flying off and uh opinions are great but have, have the data to back it up in too now some of you are going to say well why didn't you just put in a uh uh, PowerPoint tracking system. I've seen a nice one out there um, that you can hook up to your photovoltaics in series. Okay, um, and you can see this is the research from this, and the black dark system here shows you that yes, the maximum PowerPoint tracking system outperforms the the PV system without it every month. Okay, hey, that's pretty good. It's not outperforming it by a lot on some months. Um, the clear system. Well, that's just a photothermal system. Sometimes the photothermal actually gets better than the um, MPPT. So, but there's another way to increase the power here. Now, I know I can buy this little thing I talked about. And it's going to be around by the time I get it shipped here, put it in a case or box, mount on the wall. I can easily have $300 wrapped up in that. 
Well, uh, that's the price of, of an extra panel, and that's the route I took. <laughs> I just bought one more panel, and uh, so I can probably make a third more um, than what some of these charts are ver versus two. So that, that's the route I took anyway. Now, again, some of you are going to say, well, why don't you just go the route of getting a... Um, a heat exchanger water heater I mean, those are really efficient they're nice and i probably might have gone that route because they got power here however my water heater is not in my garage it's in my basement and those systems have this white noise it's like an air conditioner in your back room i'm not going to put up with that noise so that's why i did what i did based on the system that i have okay so that's that's why i did not do the mppt i went down this different pathway I was pretty far down this rabbit hole anyway, so that's why I'm going down this direction here too. So, but yeah, you, you go ahead and look up this. This, this is a, this is a nice, nice bunch of research here too. So, just do a Google and this performance analysis of photovoltaic water heating system too. And that's really going to kind of uh, explain a lot of things. I, I do like this research. Um, now, something else I did to increase my efficiency. I got this system up and running here just a few months ago. And uh, I was out there playing with it one day, and I put my hand on the panel, and it's like, wow, this thing, I could not leave it there. It was so hot. So I have one of these infrared, infrared thermometers. I went out there and shot that, and sure enough, I was getting 150 degrees Fahrenheit in some areas of my panel. Well, if you look at the, on the data, of course, of your spec sheet, you'll see that temperature coefficient of Pmax is, is 0.42% 42, 42 per, for um Per degree centigrade okay and, and what that means it's how that's how much you lose efficiency over the theoretical maximum or what their optimum heating uh using your panel is basically your normal operating cell temperature according to this thing is basically 113 degrees so anything that you get above that 113 degrees well you can apply that 0.42 percent to and show how much you're decreasing your efficiency so in my case, uh, if, if the collectors were 65 degrees centigrade, that's 150 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 65.6 minus the 45 of the normal temperature. Well, that delta or difference is 20.6 degrees, okay? Well, 20.6 degrees times that 0.42, that comes up to close, approaching 9% loss of efficiency just because my panels are too hot. Well, that per month, per week, per year, you're talking a lot of power right there. And so I figured, well, this is one way I can actually increase my efficiency uh, as well. And so what I did, <laughs> I took off all my panels and got the biggest hole saw I've ever seen in my life. And it was a lot of fun to use. It, it's, uh, it's fun. <laughs> um, and I went ahead and drilled these uh, holes, vent holes. Some are just passive. And some of these hold these little muffin fans. These are 12 volt muffin fans. And I could not place them everywhere uh, because it's the braces I had in the back then too. But I tried to kind of spread them out where I possibly could to do the best, <laughs> the best cooling here too. And uh, what I also did though too, I want to make sure that they're watertight. I just built these little rings of aluminum. Um, and stuck them into the, into the holes I had drilled and, and basically silicone the whole area up here too with the, hopefully make them watertight then too. But I didn't, because I know these are pretty watertight, but if you get water running down this thing on behind the panels, you know, a good rainstorm or something, it can probably easily get into the, the fan area and, and maybe do some damage here too. So this way it's more like just a dam to hold it and shed the water off each side then too. So... Um, so anyway, that's what the second uh, PV system, the third panel, I should say, running on the far left. This is it right here. This is actually, like I said, not connected to the PV, but this is actually a power panel I'm using because eventually I'll be using this one to, to control my, you know, I'm going to go back and build another type of a, um, thermal system that ties into my water heater, but it's not going to be the flat plate. It's going to be a tracking system I'm using for a a Fresno trough then too. But anyway, this really is cool because <laughs> it really cooled it. And I can shoot the um, temperatures now 
and they're way down around that 112 degree, 110 degree, uh, even on a real hot, sunny day. So, and I noticed that when I was drilling the holes. Uh, maybe it's maybe the way the direction of the wind is coming from, but boy, I could put my hand right where a hole would be drilled. It's like, wow, there's a nice breeze coming there too. So I will be mounting uh, temperature sensors back here too. So it won't be running 24, you know, whenever it's in the sunlight here. Uh, there'll be a temperature sensor there. When it, when it goes over a certain threshold, it'll turn the fans all on then too. So, but that's, that's, coming up right now they're just hooked directly to this panel right here too so so the plumbing side of it well i was not going to do this much work uh, with an old water heater and my water heater was approaching 25 degrees 25 years old i should say um there's an old slate fantastic water heater i know al smith had bought that company it was a trooper for me anyway um but what i did I went out and got a new water heater, uh, LP, I have LP gas here. And so um, this is my cold supply line that used to go in right into this hose right, or this uh, line right here. But what I did now, I actually put a T here, took this I'm using PEX now, which is really good when it comes to pressure and temperature and all that. This is my cold supply. This actually goes under my steps into the back room to my solar water heater preheater and then it comes right back up through the heating part and this is the, this is now the exiting of the solar water heater and this actually feeds the cold side to my water heater here uh, this is why i'm always dumping in then um, warmer water hopefully real hot water into my water heater um, so this system will not work as much hopefully not at all if i get everything right here too and and by the way uh, I found out, if you look at my video on how to make the Tin Man costume, I was gluing up all sorts of foam and stuff, and so I used the same techniques I learned there, and you can make these custom pieces of uh, insulation very easily, so that worked up, that worked really well then too, and I was a little bit concerned about putting the insulation by the um, exhaust here too, but boy, you can't even burn this stuff, you can put a flame right to it and nothing happens, so uh, and I have no problem with that at this time then too so um now in the back room okay this is actually in the room where i have my pv heater this is my cold line coming from well basically this one right here it goes all the way in the back line now, again this is bef before i put the insulation on I, I figured i better take some pictures now so people can see this because it won't make a lot of sense if i have it all insulated up then too but this is the cold line coming up from that line this goes into the pv tank okay into the cold supply and the tank exits from this side um, going out into the other side over here okay now this third valve in the middle here well that's i can shut that off if i sh if i sh shut off these two and open this up i should say i can bypass the whole pv system um I, just in case for maintenance cleaning it out whatever here too i don't have to dismantle or unhook anything i can just shut it off temporarily and that's worked very very well for me i actually had to clean it up when i when i switched my uh, heating element i just had to drain it down a little bit and it was, it was a simple thing to do then too so and this is what I'm using here. This is my heating elements. Um, I actually, um, sorry, this is actually the PV tank here, but this is my um, supply lines. This is my out hot going to it, my cold coming in. I use the stainless steel connectors here too. And like I said, there's my heating uh, sensor back here on this side as well. Again, pre-insulation here too. Um, so that worked, has worked extremely well here. Um, there is my, this was, this was taken a couple days ago, and I've even changed the programming since then. Uh, now I have the upper end of 150 degrees, because what happened here, this temperature sensor runs just a little bit too, well, say five degrees, uh, it measures five degrees cooler than what the water really is in the tank. And so I was, I was approaching 140 degrees here, and we ran hot water someplace in the house. Of course, hot water hit up the pipe here, warmed up the sensor. Over 100 degrees, it shuts off my um, solid state relay, and really I'm sort of wasting power. So what I did, I, I adjusted this around then too, um, so now it won't trigger off until it hits 140. It can also trigger off, of course, if it if the temperature switch down below here on the thermostat and you know, on the the tank itself turns off then too. So it's got some various safety things here too. And, and speaking of safety here, um, don't just use something like this for a, a water heating system. Now I suppose you, 
it, you could if you had a real small tank and make sure the whole tank gets nice and hot. The problem is right now with my 80 gallon tank with only this system, it only gets the top part of the tank hot. Um, this is a solar, um, a ream solar tank and it's got heating coils in the bottom. And I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and put the thermal loop system on, but not the one I, it's going to be a real nice system tracking, a tracking Fresnel trough. Um, that, that way I can control the angle and then hence control the temperature coming out of it too. So, but that's going to be the part two of this video. I'm still welding the aluminum right now. I'm putting the whole things up then too, but that should be a fun one too. But you, the reason I'm going to say you can't just use this because someplace in this tank, you're going to get the perfect temperature for say Legionera um, bacterial, uh, bacteria to, to grow and other things here too. This does not heat up the whole tank. Remember this is just my preheating tank. I'm using this water to dump into my regular hot water heater which I always keep 140 degrees or higher. That was that will sanitize and kill off any bacteria I'm going into that. And also on my house I have a whole house sanitizer. All my water hot and cold run through a UV sterilizing light uh, has a bulb down there basically and the whole th everything runs through that so really I'm killing off or trying to kill off anything from my well uh, before it even gets to up an, uh, an area to grow someplace here too so yeah you do have to make some steps here to make sure that you're going to be safe with the system here too so but anyway this is what I got so far and like I said I can post a code I'm not sure how well it's going to help you because this is this um um, board I have here is actually a custom type of uh, Arduino shield. I suppose I could post that too, uh, how it's going to be then too. But um, yeah, for me, this is a, I, I'm glad I took this path. It's been a nice learning thing and I figured I hope this video helps other people <laughs> learn too. So I figured I'd share this information here too. So anyway, I will be posting um, the second part about this when I get my um, photovoltaic Sorry, my uh, Fresno reflecting tr uh, trough, whatever system you're working. That's uh, should be a lot of fun. Uh, it's been fun to make, but I'm probably another two months from probably getting operational. So anyway, hope it helps.